Hello and welcome back to Gary's Garage and in this episode we're going to be looking at changing the rear diff and sorting out the brakes. So last episode we managed to go out and have a nice drive in the car and the sound levels were much better with all the sound insulation I put in. However, there is still a nasty noise coming from the back end, which I think is probably the rear diff. If you remember in an earlier episode last year, I had a look at replacing the diff, but the new one that I got is from a slightly later 200SX and it has a built-in ABS sensor at the front, so it's about an inch longer. At the time, I wasn't planning on making major modifications to the car. Obviously, that um, changed somewhat. But now is the time to actually sort out and fit that diff properly. So, first thing we need to do is get the car up in the air, whip the old diff and diff carrier out, and get it all up on the bench, and again, compare them and see what we need to do to make it fit. So that's the diff out and as was noted when I put the camera under the back of the car a few episodes ago after making the new drive shafts, the diff carrier was wobbling around quite a bit and that is probably because part of the boot floor where I'd filled in where the spare wheel well used to be under the petrol tank is not particularly well attached to the car anymore. Now, I don't think that is the cause of the vibrations, but obviously it is not going to help. And while I've got the diff carrier off to remake it, it's a very good opportunity to make that mount to the body of the car a lot better. That will also as well stop my suspension moving around as well, because obviously half of the suspension is attached to the diff carrier. So next thing to do will be whip this petrol tank out so that we can get to all of that area and I can look at putting a nice strong bit of box section in place and we can then use that to bolt through onto the new diff carrier. So with the petrol tank now out of the way, I can get a better view of what is going on here. And that panel that's gone in where the spare wheel well was, and it's got a bit of angle iron on top to support the diff. Well, that whole panel is rather loose. So what I'm going to do is just chop out the entirety of that patch panel where the spare wheel well was and I'm going to put a piece of box section underneath between the chassis rails and that will be the mounting for the diff carrier and then the boot floor here can just be a piece of bodywork panel it's not going to be structural for the diff. So I've roughly positioned the rear diff in mm, about the place it needs to go under the car just suspended on trolley jacks and the next thing I think I'm going to do is pull apart this rear diff carrier the existing one and I'm going to see whether I can reuse any of this back section because it does have obviously the suspension mounting point in the right place. Also, there's this front section that obviously bolts up to the diff and went through the attached it to the floor. Again, if I can reuse that, then it's slightly less fabrication to do. So let's get this apart and see what, if any of it, is reusable because that diff does sit about an inch further back. So as I was pulling this diff out, I noticed that the drive shaft output on this side was loose. And that should not be loose, that should be popped in and on a circlip. So I don't know whether that is causing any of my noise issues. I don't think so, because it has always been rather noisy from the back end all the time I've had this diff. And I'm sure that the last time I had this out, it was not like this but I can't remember, and I'm changing the diff anyway. So 
just an interesting thing that uh, that should definitely not be like that. That definitely should not be loose, that should be pushed all the way in. So I'm going to have a look at whether I can reuse this rear section because obviously it's got the mounting to the diff and it's also got two of the suspension mounting holes in it. But obviously it's attached to the rest and it definitely needs to be repositioned. And well, these need to be repositioned. One of these thread holes is a little bit rough as well. So I think I'm going to chop that off and look at doing the side bits again. Also because I would like it to be so that I don't have to dismantle half the suspension should I ever need to change the diff. I want to make it nice and simple to change the diff, just the bolt to hold the diff on and the drive shafts and that's it. So I'll cut through this and we'll look at offering it up to the car and see what it looks like. So in order to reuse that rear section of the old diff carrier I need to swap the rear covers over on the two diffs. The S13 one, which is the old one, has four mounting bolts and the S14 one, the newer one that's going in, has only two and they're different sizes and in different positions and these are normally mounted on rubber bushes whereas these are solid mounted. So I'm sticking with solid mounted despite the noise. So need to whip the two covers off and swap them over. got the rear diff back in roughly the right place on the jack again and this is a bar that I've made up that will eventually be the support for it so I think what I need to do is take off these existing uh, mounting holes that's where I had the rubber boots through take those off and then I can slide this into place and that will eventually then bolt directly up to it and that will slide somewhere like there Ish. So that's the old rear mounting for the diff now solidly mounted to this piece of hefty box section which is welded to the chassis rails. Yes it is now solidly mounted and it's going to transmit a little bit more noise than before however it will stop it from moving around. So the next thing to do is move to the front of the diff and I'm going to have a look and see whether I can reuse any of the old diff carrier because it does have that nice hump that goes over the front of the diff. But this diff does have a much bigger hole in the front for the uh, mounting bolt. So I'll need to see whether with the box section I've already added, it's just too much. But let's have a look at that next and see what we can do. We've now at least got a place that this can be bolted back up to and nicely lined up for getting the front end sorted. Right, so I've manipulated the uh, front bit, the existing front bit, roughly into place. See, with this side bar still on, it uh, did not go on nicely because these mounting lugs are so much bigger. But we're now sitting on the diff across there and we can see light through both those sides. So that needs to be spaced up by quite a way anyway to make that uh, sit nicely. And also I think that these mounting points are going to be in the wrong place compared to the uh, bolts that come through the floor which are into a piece of box section under the rear seat. They are solid bits of box section. They are a very good pickup point so I don't want to remake those holes, especially if I can avoid getting the rear seat back out because that was a pain to put back in. So I think what I'm going to do is just start from scratch with this, do something to pick up on these two and then get it mounted up into the car on these and then look at strengthening the whole section 
and joining the front and the back and I also need to think about how I'm going to redo these lower mounts as well so that they are nice and strong but the main thing I really want is to be able to get the diff in and out preferably without removing anything. I would like to be able to get the diff out without removing any suspension. Not entirely sure whether I'll be able to do it but that is my aim. So while I'm in the process of redesigning this, let's try at least to get it to that. Or if I need to remove one suspension arm, that's better than removing lots. So yeah, let's start by trying to figure out how to remake these mounts and get that all lined up with what we've got in the car already. So as I said before, the front bolt mounts on this are much bigger than the S13 diff and that's because they originally had rubber bushes. You can get uprated polyurethane and solid bushes, but I have a 3D printer. So I have printed myself up a couple of bits that will become a bush. So these will go either side of the hole, like that, with a nice big bolt through the middle, and that should be nice and strong. Yes, they are plastic, however, they are printed with lots of walls, lots of layers, and the infill on the bits that, that are slightly more hollow is a high percentage of a very strong infill pattern. So I'm fairly confident that these will do the trick. And if they don't, then I will pull it off and I will either remake these or I will make some out of metal or I'll just go out and buy some. But proof of concept, let's see how these work. These work, you know, 10 minutes designing and a couple of hours printing on the printer so it's not really a big time sink and I have 3D printer I bought it mostly for making car parts so why not make car parts from it so those will make form the basis of that with the 14 mil bolt and a nice nut so what I need to do now is think about the mounting of these and also the mount onto the bolts that are on the body and again I have printed out some replacement for these rubbers so these were old um, I think front bush from an Anglia they are an actually an Anglia part um, again I can get polyurethane ones I probably could make solid metal ones but again have printer will print so those are going to be for the tubes that go up and the bolts that come through from the floor. So I need to get started on that and then if we can get the front mounted up, we've got the back mounted up and then we can look at joining the two together and getting that final lower suspension arm in place. So the diff is suspended now on the back and the front. The jack is still in there just for safety, although it's not actually really resting on it. But we're still nowhere near complete. The front, the two bits for the front now need to be linked together to make them nice and solid. And then from there, we also need to figure out where this final bottom arm is going to mount to because that needs to come kind of in this big gap here where there is currently nothing. So first step will be to get something across the top of the diff to tie those two front bits together and that's going to be the next front bit because I don't really want to start removing it from the car right now just in case either of these two bits I've just put on move slightly because then everything will be out of alignment. So more fumbling around underneath the car a foot and a half off the ground but we'll get there 
we will get there. I think the answer to the what am I going to use to go across the front of the diff has been staring me in the face and that is the original bit. So what I can do is I can slice off just this arch here, get rid of the ends and the bottom. That gives me a nice strong bit of metal which I know is designed for the task and we can make that fit up in the space we've got and that should certainly be nice and strong. And then all we need to worry about is, as I said, the replacement for this bracket. Somehow, and make it so we can't, we can still get the diff off. Yeah, good fun. So hopefully that will make quite a nice cap for joining those two bits together. And if I'm really lucky, then I can get this bracket for the speed sensor in the same place as well and reuse that. Otherwise, I'll need to whip that off and quickly redo that. So let's go and get this offered up to the car and see whether it's anywhere near. And if it is, get it tacked into place so I can pull the whole thing off and bring it up to the bench to weld it up fully. So that's the front end all welded up and that is nice and solid. The next thing I need to figure out is how I'm going to link the front and back together for a bit of extra strength and also mostly because it needs to take the final suspension arm mounting which sits sort of here in the middle surrounded by pretty much nothing at the moment. I've previously, when I looked at this diff carrier before, made a bolt in section for one side to make it easier to get the diff in and out. So why not do the same thing? I can probably reuse this. It does line up quite nicely. Need, we'll need the front mounting redone because obviously I have chopped that off. But I think this is probably going to be the rough idea of what I'm going to do. Try to reuse as much of this if I can. But I think that will be a good solution both sides being able to be bolted on and bolted off, it then makes it a lot easier to get the diff in and out without having to do any kind of rat crazy movements and rotations and that. I can just use a trolley jack and just nice and easily raise it up and lower it down. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to crack on and try to get this lot finished up. So what I've got here is the original bottom section of the diff carrier. These two shorter ends slid in and bolted into place. Uh, originally this side was the fixed side and this is the one that I made removable. So what I'm going to now do is make both of these removable so all of these will unbolt and then the diff should just drop out of the bottom. So that's, uh, you know, all lined up. We've got all the mount in the right places so I will realign it based on this point at the back here and then I can look at putting some sort of support on to take this front end up to the front of the diff carrier and hopefully that will be a nice solution to getting this all mounted up. all the major pieces of the diff carrier jigsaw pretty much sorted other than just sorting out this bracket for the speed sensor that will pick up on the nuts that hold the prop to the diff. 
and unfortunately I don't have any more time to do that and it also needs a good coat of paint before I put it back together because I really don't want to be taking it back out the car again just to paint it. And unfortunately we also didn't get round to looking at the brakes and we've still got that massive great big hole in the front of the boot floor because it wasn't properly attached. So join me next time on Garage Garage when we will continue on those tasks that I didn't get done this time. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.